Pacific, minor 8 degrees. Fargo Moorhead, 3 below, Paul Jerkins News, Radio KFGO. This is The Drive with Dan Michaels. Now, now we're throughout, throughout the region, region with 100,000 watts on 104.7 FM. 94.1 FM in the FM Metro. The KFGO mobile app. KFGO.com. And on the triple, triple towers, towers of power, power the, the mighty 790. 790 News Radio. KFGO. The Mighty 790 KFG, isn't that a great sound to hear it right is. now? It is. I'd like the intro going on for Jack Michaels to be doing a game up there right now. I'll tell you that. 4.10 p.m., good afternoon. Welcome back to The Drive. I'm Dan Michaels. Polly Lyons is our producer, and you just heard Mr. Jurgens at the KFGO News Center. We have more news coming up at the bottom of the hour at 4.30 with Paul Jurgens. Yeah, the FM Red Hawks uh, have uh, announced a couple of things in the last couple of days, including uh, their schedule. Uh, that looks really great, and we're also hopeful that we're going to just play baseball, play baseball on a regular basis with a regular schedule, have some fun. And the man to talk to about all those things is the president of the FM Red Hawks, Mr. Brad Thome. We assume he is in his office on the north side of Fargo, but let's uh, hook up. Brad, welcome back to KFGO. I am in sunny, beautiful North Fargo today. <laughs> It's beautiful as long as you stay inside. <laughs> it looks so nice outside right now, yes. It's deceiving, isn't it? Well, Brad, hey, thanks so much uh, for uh, joining us this afternoon. Uh, so, and overall, before we jump into the schedule and stuff like that, Brad, how are things yeah. going uh, with the uh, American Association and with Red Hawks baseball after that weird year we just went through? Oh, it was, I mean, it was a devastating year last year. Obviously, everyone knows that. I mean, uh, you know, anyone in the sports or entertainment or leisure, you know, I mean, it, it was, it was pretty bad for us. Um, that's all I can say. I never want to go through that again. I mean, that's, you know, no, no, you know, it was one thing if it was my fault that it happened and, and really <laughs> screwed up on something, but when it's not, that's what makes it really tough on you. So yeah, I'm no kidding. Uh, I, I got to give you credit, Brad, you got a big award for being franchise of the year. And a lot of it had to do with the way you did, handle your things and i gotta tell you brad the, the way that the fm red hawks figured it out so quick last year you still had fans not as many as you wanted and etc but you still had fans come into the stadium you you separated them out and you uh even while it was happening we called it the template and now looking back a year you really did have a great template for how you presented red hawks baseball yeah we really did and you know from from cleaning of the stadium to to the protocols with our with our players and staffing, uh, we're going to follow through that on on that for this next year. You know that that's the plan at least until they uh, to tell us that we can uh, you know bring our dogs back basically. And you know right now we're we're basically counting on doing the same type of protocol. I'm I'm anticipating that the uh, um, seating will be back to normal here by by the summer, but I would presume maybe masks, maybe not. But, you know, we'll have the hand sanitizers out and we'll be cleaning things and uh, and just making sure that everyone feels safe in the Red Hawks environment here. So uh, what what how many fans are you going to allow in? Is it going to be a certain percentage? And what does the vaccine do to that? Well, my friend, we're about three months too early on that for me to be able to tell you, but I'm anticipating about 4,500 a night because everyone's going to want to get out there, <laughs> have a great time, and enjoy ice-cold beverage Ugh. on a Beautiful warm summer evening, uh, watching some great baseball. That's what my anticipation is. That sounds great to me. Yeah, how's that? That so, sounds fantastic. So, uh, does the have you guys? When you, I know you talk all the time with your your, your fellow uh, presidents, your fellow baseball teams in the American Association. When you do talk to those guys, do, do they ever talk about how you know if the vaccine gets up to so many million people inoculated, will you go ahead with full stadiums stuff like that? Have you talked about that? You know, it's up to the, each of the individual localities. Um, I know, like like Chicagoland, they're anticipating about a fifty percent um, being able to have fifty percent of people in their uh, stadiums this summer. That's what they're they're going after right now. You know, of, of their capacity, which like Kane County Cougars, I don't you you may have heard that that they just came into our league here. They were a Class A affiliate uh, over the last twenty some odd years, but they're they're seating. Uh, um, is like uh, ten thousand something. Is there so they if they have fifty percent capacity, they still got five thousand people. That'd be wow. probably the number one or two team in the league for attendance mm -hmm. um, at fifty percent. So um, which would be good. You know, that's probably pretty close to what they average right now. So um, 
it's just they got really big stadiums. So, you know, and same with uh, Chicago. I think their seating capacity is seven something. And same with uh, Gary. So, for the most part, you know, you're not going to see a huge drop for those in the bigger cities. You know, for us out here in, in, in South Dakota, Iowa, I, I presume by that time, I would hope we'd be at 100% capacity. Well, I sure hope so. Um, yeah. So as long as you're talking about uh, the King County Cougars, and I was going to ask you, what this if, if people don't realize or haven't thought too deeply on it, uh, coming up this season now, the uh, St. Saint Paul Saints are going to be the Minnesota Twins AAA affiliate, which is going to make things really good for the Minnesota Twins. Kind of throws a wrinkle into the American Association. You just brought up the King County Cougars. Uh, I was going to ask you, what does their move out of the league do to the American Association? And that King County must be the answer, huh? Well, that's one of the answers. You know, we we feel that uh, I've always felt that there could have easily been another team in the St. Paul area, but there was a uh, um, a thirty five mile radius where you're not allowed to. You know, you have your own home territory type of thing. So that now with them moving to affiliated, that would open up for another team to be able to be put into the Minneapolis St. Paul area, which I'm not. I don't know anything by any stretch, but I, I couldn't imagine there not being an independent team in the Twin Cities area within, you know, five to ten years for sure. And that would help us out, you know, heading down to Chicago if you happen to be able to play a game or a three games set on the way down or on the way back. It it makes it very nice for travel. You know, right now it's not too terrible with with Milwaukee's eight and a half, nine hours away. It's it's not not too terrible a ride, so Okay. The luxury coach buses we have now, it's, it's you know, when you have Wi-Fi and Internet and television and sleeper buses, and it's it's come a long way, baby. As so say. it's not like the 1970s school bus I used to take on the field trips out to Dickinson? Correct. Yeah, good. Correct. It, it's not bad. It's <laughs> not great. It's not what everyone wants to do, but it's, it's not bad. I got you. All. We do it. We do the best we can for our players. Well, of course, and you always do. And speaking of putting, uh, doing the best things for your players, uh, one of the things the FM Red Hawks do is they team uh, their players up with local homes so that the players have a, a nice home environment, a place to go to. Uh, can you talk to us about that and if you're in need of any more homes to lodge players? Oh, you mean for, yeah, for our host families. Absolutely. Yeah. We're always looking for good quality host families. I mean, we have so many great ones. I mean, we've had ones that, have been here virtually from day one. I mean, we just longevity. It's incredible the amount of players some of these people have had. And and last year we had a, a new family, uh, really good family, and they ended up uh, hosting a, a pitcher, uh, Matt Tomshaw, ended up getting picked up. But now he, they're excited to watch him. He's invited to major league spring training, and mm. you know they 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 couldn't be happier. And they're so excited to come back this next year. And, you know, it's almost winning the lottery on some of those things. But, uh, you know, to get to talk to a player like that, you know, text to talk all the time. And, and you know, we bring in high-quality people, and, and they're good people, and uh, and uh, it works out good. We probably, I would say, as a whole, you know, 10 to 12 of our players, maybe a couple more than that, are in host families. Some find their own residences. Others, you know, we have to get a, a room and board for, or room for uh, in apartments that we rent ourselves, but so uh, yep. how does one become a host family if they want to do that? Oh, uh, they could call our general manager Matt Rao at two three five six one six one. Which right now my phone lines are down, so please don't call right now. <laughs> um, we just found that out, so hopefully they'll be fixed here uh, this afternoon yet. But uh, tomorrow, hopefully, okay. Uh, they could call or email as well. Go on our website and, and take a look at Matt Rao's email and say they're interested in being host family. And we do an interview process. And just make sure we know what they're about. And, uh, you know, if they happen to have pets, we maybe have uh, uh, players who are allergic to cats or, or dogs or something so where they can't be put in there. So we, we do a long, long laundry list of uh, questionnaire and find out about them and what they're looking for and, and what have you. And if they want to have sit-down family meals or let them be on their own, if they buy the food, if they don't, I mean, it's a big long laundry list of things. So Okay, well, you know, and I imagine most of these players uh, become part of the family when they're living with these people. Absolutely, yep. Well, so if you'd like to do that, <clears throat> you want to become a host family, uh, 235-6161, which is, you know, always the phone number of the FM Red Hawks. Uh, keep that uh, to the side someplace, and uh, when the phone system's back up next couple of days, talk it over with your family. Maybe you'd like to do that. All right, so the schedule came out. What do you think of your schedule? Are you happy with the schedule? Are you happy with the amount of games that you're going to be playing? 
Well, yeah, yeah, we, we've got, uh, I believe it's 54 home games because we do have a travel team this year. So we actually have four extra games on the schedule for home games than we normally would have. So anyone who goes out there and decides they want to be a season ticket holder this year, this year you're going to get like an 8% bump on your number of games you're going to have. So it's absolutely great. We didn't increase the price or anything like that. So, Wonderful. Um, yeah, people should get out there and you want to try it this next year. You'll buy two tickets. Best thing I do. You, 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 everyone lives in community, lives in with friends. Everyone buys a single ticket together, four of them, and in your family share every fourth game. You each go to games. I mean, that's the best way to go if, if uh, you're not sure you can use them. That way, we've had a lot of people do that for years and years and years. So, um, where you buy a single ticket for three hundred seventy-five dollars, and then there's three other guys to do that, or four, however many guys you want to get together and do it, and then you just split up the tickets and have a little draft. <laughs> works great see which games you want to go to uh so absolutely that sounds fantastic and uh just looking at the schedule here now the red hawks open a regular season on as it looks like may 25th against chicago and then the first fireworks game will be that friday uh boy the numbers are so, so i think it's the 28th of may against 20th the, correct yep 28th. And we're actually we're, we're yep that is correct we're uh we've got every friday night this year this is our 25th anniversary season so mm-hmm. we are blowing everything out this year what what little we have left we're blowing it all out this year it's gonna be a great year um but we've got we end up having we're gonna have uh six friday nights of fireworks and then also our fan appreciation night which is the last regular season game of the year this year is thursday uh september 2nd we're also going to be doing fireworks that night so okay uh you know we're working with there's so many things i could we could talk for an hour if you wanted to but you know, working with Carson Wentz and doing the yeah. AL one, getting right. them back here. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, been in contact with uh, Dan Burdell's family about working on the the Fargo Blues Fest again for this next year. Um, you know, we'll be in talks with them here in the next coming weeks, I'm guessing, and, and hopefully get that thing on on the docket again. We've got the dates open for them, so so we sure hope we can get that done again this year. And, uh, yeah, only six weekends this year. Also, we normally have between seven to nine. And this year we have six, which is a little bit less, which is great because that gives people more time to head out to the lakes or do whatever they want. But we're going to be jam-packed this year. I mean, we've got four um, uh, business day games, which if you want, I can even let you know who our, our talent is we've got for the for the sure. music. for the, the, the first two games, we're going to have off-duty coming back again, take Tim Eggebrotten. And the uh, the last two business day games, we've got Rick Adams, who's the lead mm-hmm. singer of the Roosters. Excellent. So, uh, yeah, we've got some great talent coming in for that, and people just love to get out there and enjoy themselves on a beautiful warm afternoon and enjoy an adult beverage or two, and, mm-hmm. and uh, we're going to be ready for them this summer. Well, it sure sounds like uh, I can't wait, and I hope nothing stops the baseball season from hitting us and going really well. Uh, and uh, taking off on time. Again, the home opener, there'll be an exhibition game or two, I'm sure, before this, uh, but the home opener is scheduled to be on May 25th against Chicago at Newman Outdoor, or Newman Outdoor Field. Brad Thelton, the president of the FM Red Hawks. Brad, thanks very, very much. We can't wait. And by the way, if we want to get some stuff, the, uh, the store is open, the team store is open all the time, right? It is all the time, and our individual game tickets are going on sale on April 5th. Oh, April That's 5th. our, our, our Yep, our plan date for that. Otherwise, you can always buy flex packs or call us for season tickets. We'd love to help you out and show you uh, where we have some great places. FMRedHawks.com. I'm looking at the schedule right now. Brad Thom, thanks very much. Go Red Hawks. All right, my friend. Appreciate thanks, it. Brad. My pleasure, always. 424, you're listening to The Drive.